So today I'm working on the Fontec Polaris timer system. Now this one was being used last weekend or attempted to be used last weekend and there's an issue with this pole not communicating to the console. Now the consoles actually have a feature in there, you can actually check an RF strengths feature so you can actually go in there and check for what channel the signal is coming from on and how strong that signal is. Even though it's triggering this pole manually, it's definitely sending a signal out or trying to send a signal, there was nothing being received. These come with two sets of poles, so there's another set as well, and I used those ones and those worked fine. So it wasn't actually an issue with this receiver, the receiver was working fine, it's an issue with this pole's transmitter. We've also got a second problem, this particular pole has a note on here about LED not lighting up, but I know it does light up, but I think it's as it warms up it starts to get irregular. It's got an issue with that LED being 40 I think. Hopefully I'm catching it on camera later on. But yeah, so this pole definitely wasn't sending a signal out. Let's turn this on. So the switch on here is also feeling a bit unpleasant, not ideal. Let's turn the poles on. It's lit up, as you can see. It's lighting up, it goes green. Once we've got a signal from this other pole. And when I block the beam, it should send a signal out. You see this go off, we go red, and the timer should start. Just like that. Now it won't stop again because it uses a pair of poles so the other pair has to, has to stop it. So that other pair I don't have set up here. But this pole definitely wasn't starting it before. So if I go into the setup menu in here and um, go into the OF strength. Okay, so you see channel 6 up there is a D. In this mode it will beep every single time I put my hand through the beam. So that is working. Not to period of time I go back to zero again. There you go, says zero. Then put my hand through. It says D. Now previously when I was testing this at the event only the other red pole would trigger that. I'm really close to this right? transmitter's in here right there and there's the antenna for the receiver so it's really close range right now it's ridiculously close. Right now it's working perfectly but at the event it wasn't so there's an issue up here with this transmitter I think so I need to pull this out so I've got to fix that transmitter part and also have to fix this LED which is a bit intermittent. So I've got the assembly out of the actual unit there's a backboard and here's the circuit board there's the top piece, the top section, there's the processor, got a crystal there, there's an infrared sensor, there's the indicator LED, this is the RF module and obviously there's the antenna. And it's got a little voltage regulator here as well. So what I was seeing when this was faulting at the event is that this LED was changing colour like it's supposed to, so the controller was working, it's also indicating that it's sending a signal out, so it go red to say it's lost the infrared signal, so it's the infrared's working, so which means that this should then be sending out data to this RF module here. But it wasn't getting there. So I don't think it's an antenna problem because it would have still been working at the range we were at. We we're only within a couple of feet of this thing. And without an antenna, that would have still worked. So it's not an antenna connection problem. It's likely an issue with this module or the way this module is connected to this ball. See, it's got this cancellation set up on here. These modules, or these Fontech timers, They've, they've got a few different versions of RF systems on them, depending on um, which era they're from. So the very first ones had a big, dedicated monolithic IC on there, big IC, which was sold to the ball and that is all integrated. And then we've got this style like this, with this module built on, which is like a aftermarket module which is fitted. And then there's also one which has got the all the RF circuitry built onto the main board. So it's assembled as part of this unit. So it's instead of being a separate module, it's just part of it and it's all built into it. So there's at least three that I've seen that exist. So I think this one's like the medium age, medium age type, not the newest one. So it could just be an issue with the solder joint and these cancellations, bad connection. It could be the voltage regulator that's giving trouble. It could be a data problem from this chip here. I mean, it could be an issue with this chip because this looks like it's sending data up here. Okay, so it's got four wires come up, which obviously go to this module. And also got the voltage regulator section here. Also goes to this module, so um, it looks like it's got two supplies, maybe, maybe that's zero volts there and that's five volts or three volts, whatever it is. Can't see what the voltage is there, can't tell you, I'll have to measure it. Yeah, so we've got these connections here which go up, and obviously that's some other supply line down there. So it could be something with these lines coming up, but it's most likely to do with cancellations and the soldering onto the circuit board. It could still be an issue on this board itself, you know, it could be solder joints on that IC. Unlikely, but possible. Could have been impacted and shaken around a bit and dropped. Um, you know, there's also cancellations up here as well. So that's why my first thought is a bad cancellation connection needs need resoldering. But like I said, right now it's working, which is really annoying because I actually want it to not be working so that I can help diagnose 
where the fault actually is. If it wasn't working, I could go through and just like press each of these and see if it starts to work. If I compress that and it starts working, I know it's definitely about solder joint. It's gonna be in this area here somewhere, right? That's where the fault is gonna be, in there. We can ignore all this other stuff. We could still be a bad joint on this IC, I suppose. We could just check those, make sure they look okay. I mean, on first glance, I look fine. There's nothing there looking like it's a bit dodgy, really. I'll probably just go over the thing and just check. I mean, this chip here is possible. And that's what's on the back of the board, in case you're interested. There's nothing there. So it's all on the top side. So I'm looking along all these castellations, and they're looking okay. There's a couple which look maybe slightly suspect. But the main thing I'm looking at here is this chip as well. Now, on the side of this chip, get something to point with, these legs here, those are looking less than perfect. I mean, they're probably okay, but they don't look quite right to me. So I actually think that I should really solder this chip. Now, what is the chip? XE1203FI063N8KT289P37VP. I like 46 markings, it's probably 2008. There's a crystal there, that looks fine. That joint there is looking a little bit dodgy. And this, even that's looking a bit dodgy there, and that white one at the bottom. Yeah, I think I should just go through and resolder this and see if that does the job. So I'm not completely sure yet. I mean, I've, there's a few joints around which I'm not happy with. Most look kind of okay, but, um, although I said about the antenna one probably not being an issue, but because it's not likely to be that because of the range. That joint there, which is the antenna one, isn't looking the best either. I think it probably is made, but it's looking a little bit dodgy. I'm basically going to have to do a bunch of mass resoldering just to try and get something which is uh, going to behave. Um, yeah, that chip there looks fine, I can't see anything there really. I mean, maybe that pin 14. It's maybe a little bit iffy, maybe. Yeah, so there's nothing really stand out as being particularly bad. The cap there is looking a bit, maybe that, it's got a crack in there maybe. It's just slightly dry joints. The problem is, if this is lead 3 solder, then we're going to get more issues. Lead 3 does does not work as well. It tends to have cracks and stuff later on. It doesn't tend to do as well. And I see legs again, look at you know, a little bit cold joint just there in the crystal, but maybe again, lead free can be hard to tell. This side here, yeah, a couple of maybe cold joint, but again, lead free stuff makes it hard to tell. So, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take this chip off the board. This is a really small footprint on this thing. I'm not quite sure what the pin pitch is, but it's pretty small. So, I've got to lift this chip off, clean the pads up, and I'll put it back down again using leaded solder. Maybe that's the problem. And then I'll go around and do the calculations as well around the outside of this. And that should basically then, I suppose, eliminate most of this board. Um, I might just go through and just touch up anything, which looks maybe a little bit iffy on some of these parts. I mean, there's a couple of joints which look slightly dodgy on these. But that's likely to be either this chip here or the calculations on this board. So those are the two things I'm going to try resoldering. This chip is a little bit tricky because of the size of it. And alignment's got to be critical and that sort of stuff. It's going to be a tricky one to do, but, you know, it is what it is. So I'm going to get some flux on this, just to help it slightly. Makes more mess, but it's fine. Just a bit of flux, just to uh, help things to flow. It doesn't really matter too much, more of when I put it back on again, but I'll, I'll clean all this off again anyway, yep. Pin 1 is towards the camera. Just get closer. Closer is the other way. So using 350, 60% air. I don't know if there's a thermal pad underneath it or not. It could be. Based on how it's not lifting up yet, it's entirely possible that's the case. Don't forget, it's probably lead free solder as well. I may have to put the heat up. It's taking longer than I'd like it to take. Okay, let's put the heat up. I always try it lower temperature first. If it doesn't work, then put it up. I can see some molten solder there. Here we go. Yep, thermal pad underneath. So, thermal pad underneath is why it's so hard to get off. So I'm going to clean these pads up now, Let's put some fresh solder on it, and then I'll put the chip back on. So I've been cleaning up the chip as well, and I've wicked off the worst of the solder on there from the centre pad, because I was like, you have to end up with too much on there, it will float. That could have been what was causing the problem in the first place, it's actually had too much solder on it. So I've already flooded this with leaded solder, and what I'll try and do is I'll put a little bit of solder on all these pads, so they've got a solder loading on them, and I should just be able to put the chip down and have it work without messing around too much. That's the plan anyway. Alright, let's try and refit it. 
I'm going to use the lowest temperature because we shouldn't need 400 now. 350, I'm going to put the air down as it might blow away. And we'll warm up the board first underneath it. That's half the problem with these. Big thermal pad right there, so that's what I need to melt is that. I think before I put that chip on, I'll um, increase the flux. Put some more flux on that, I think. I'm going to float it again. Now I'm going to turn the air down because it was blowing away too much. I think it might do about 30 now. Same temperature, 350. So I want to float it again. So you can see we've got some solder squeezing out the side there, which is perfect. I could run a soldering iron around that, clean it up. This means there's no shorts underneath the chip, hopefully, because it's pushed it out. Well, that's the chip re soldered. I'm just going to clean it up and then I shall redo the castellations as well. I've already cleaned up a little bit, but I've, I've had a couple of goes at the chip as well, just around the edges. Now, when I looked at this chip originally, before I started working on this, there was no solder on the side of the chip. It's only underneath, and the legs on the chip actually do wrap around the sides. And now I've got solder up the side of the chip. It should be better. It should be better. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily mean it really is going to be better, but it should be better. Check on the microscope. One last check. So now I'm going to do... The castellations around the outside, which is the easy bit. <laughs> Done the hard bit, now I can do the easy bit. Bit of flux on these. Soldering on, and just uh, throw some more solder on. I'm going to put too much solder on because that's what I always do. I tend to be rather generous with the solder. Now, because I'm using a really small tip, I've actually got this set quite hot. This is at 350. If I was using a larger tip, I'd be using a different temperature. So I'm just going to do this blindly. Then I shall go back and check it afterwards to see if it looks like it's flowed okay or not. I may need to revisit some of these. Feels like this part's being stubborn. May need to use a larger tip for this. This change tips. This should probably be a bit better now. I've also reduced the temperature back down to 290. I think this is ground plane here, so this is going to be stubborn. I think there's a ground plane because this antenna system, so there will be like a feed line there. Don't forget, because I've got solder on the side doesn't mean it's actually flow through to the bottom of the board. Just what I need to make sure it happens as well. I may need to put this heat back up again actually. This is struggling very slightly. Let's get back up to 350. Right, let's get that clean and see how it looks. Well, that's all cleaned up. Let's uh, check it out. Let's actually have a look at the fillets on there. There you go. Sort of fillets on the castellations. No, that's much better than it was. Well, let's put it back together and see if it works. So this pole here has got a marking about the LED not working, but obviously it is working. But I've been watching it, and sometimes it will flicker and go dim. So I'm hoping to catch it on video. So obviously the LED itself is bad. It's one of square LEDs, it's four pads because it's dual colour, does green and red. I'm hoping to see it dim. I saw it do it just now. A few moments later. There you go. That's the problem. It's flickering. 
So, can't need replacing. Right, let's try this out. I've still got a facility on this one yet. Let's turn the timer on and we'll see if this actually works or not. We've got a green light in here, which is a good sign. It means these things can at least, well, this can at least see these poles. That's half working. Right, man, the truth. Does it work? Hey, it worked. Brilliant. Now, that doesn't actually mean anything because remember when we did the testing before, it worked then too. Um, it's also got like a two second delay between triggers. So if I do it too quickly, it won't actually trigger. So let's actually do some other testing on this. Let's look at the IF strength. Even though this range should be really strong. There's D again, D, which is what we got before when we was working. All right, that's looking promising. E then, yeah, that's what we got before. So it's no worse than it was with the first testing. Maybe it's fixed, maybe it isn't. Don't know for sure, I'm gonna have to do some long-term testing on this. Maybe leave the things turned on for an hour or two and retry it or just randomly try it at different times and to see if it's working or not because that's how I'm going to find out is to just do long-term testing on these. I still need to fix this LED here. So I'm going to put this one back together fully. I'm going to assume at this point that it's done and I'll look at this LED here. That one there, that one, the one is flickering now. All right, new LED is in. Here is the old one. And the LEDs I actually use are smaller. They're actually not quite the right ones. So they're this size. They're, they barely fit on the footprint. They're really not the right one. But um, I need to actually get the right size. But these do work. They work well enough. So one day I'll actually get the right ones for these. So let's turn it on. Here we go. It's all red. As it should be. Now if I uh, turn it back on again, you see it flashes red and green. Don't show up as well on camera as it does in real life. But that's fine. It is actually working. And that is as bright as the original was. And it will definitely work a lot better than the original one which was playing up so I can take this little label off now saying it doesn't work because obviously it does and I'll do this long-term testing on their transmitter make sure the transmitter keeps on working oh, I've got to tidy up my desk now check out the other place for the farm tech repairs I've done lots of farm tech repairs catch you later